All right, I'm going to go over uh, Spring 22's exam and uh, the solutions I had for it. Um, on the left, I wrote down some general equations that I thought would be helpful, pretty much what we're just going to use here. Um, I'll say as a side note for Zn here, I know there's an equation that uses tangent instead of the cosine and sine. However, problem with... Uh, using tangent is that it is uh, undefined at odd intervals of pi over 2 since cosine is 0 at pi over 2 3 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 so when you divide divide by 0 it's undefined so it's best just to use this just in case um let's see what else yeah, right, let's just get into it um so Question one, we're given ZG, given Z naught, given a length of 9.3 lambda. If you haven't watched any videos yet before this one, um, don't be thrown off by the lambda and the length. So, let's see. So, beta equals... 2 pi over lambda, right? You should know that. So when you plug uh, your length, 9.3 lambda, into an equation, say like Zn here at the bottom, where it's b times l, you're doing 9.3 lambda, and these are simply just going to cross out. So it leaves you with 2 pi times 9.3. Don't let that mess you up. Um, we're given the impedance at the load, 73 plus J8 omega. And we're given the time varying voltage of 59.579 with a phase angle of 2.872. So you can see here, I wrote that in phaser form already. 59.579 E to J, 2.872. Alright, so... It wants us to solve the voltage at the generator. And we're given ZL. We are given uh, ZG and we're given Z0. So an equation that you have here on the left that solves for VG, this one right here, it requires VN, which we don't have yet, uh, ZN, which we can solve for, since we have zero, we have z naught, we have our length and beta, um, and we have we have zg. Uh, so we need to find vn. How do we find vn? So vn is simply just the um, the voltage at this location right here. So it's the voltage at the location negative. Alright, so let me write this. So right here, z equals zero. God, that's a terrible color. And then right here, z equals negative 9.3. I'm sure he's gone over that in class, um, but if you didn't know, now you know. There's always zero here, and it's always going to be negative something over here no matter what he gives you on the test. All right, so as I was saying, you can simply just plug that in, that negative 9.3 to your equation over here. Plug that in here where your z is, and that will give you a v in. However, we need to find v naught plus but if you look up here, there's an equation with VL, voltage at the load, which we were given. All we need is gamma, which we know we can get, because that just requires ZL and Z0. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to solve for gamma. Just get that one out of the way. Solve for what you can. And I'll say a lot of these questions, if you haven't watched any of the reviews, a lot of times you're going to have to solve for gamma, you're going to have to solve for Zn, and you're going to have to solve for V0+. Plus. Because this equation right here, this is an amazing equation. 
that will get you to pretty much any point on a transmission line. So once you find V0 plus, you can find any voltage or current or anything you would like on a transmission line. So using the formulas on the left, we have a uh, gamma is simply just oh whoa 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 it's point one nine oh four plus j point zero five two seven um, Z in just this equation over here. Plugging in your ZL, which we're given, plugging in your length of 9.3, your beta, which is going to be 2 pi because the two lambdas cancel, like I said earlier. That will come out to 34. Let me. Thirty four point one zero zero three plus J four point nine two ohms. Uh, gamma is uh, dimensionless, it's not intuitive, it's just, it's just a number. Um, so I said we need to find V naught plus. So we can find V naught plus, like I said, with VL. It'll be VL divided by one plus gamma. Again, that is this equation right here where I'm highlighting in blue. Alright, solving that, things we have, gamma, because we solved that, VO. We have V naught plus equals negative 47.5584 line, excuse me, plus J. 15.4336 volts. Now we can solve for Vn since, again, looking over here, it's the last thing we needed in this equation for the voltage at the generator. And, like I said earlier, all we have to do is plug in this point right here, negative 9.3 it's at the very end of the line, right? So, uh, let's go back to that color. So Vn is simply just V0 plus J2 pi 9.3 times 9.3 plus gamma e to the negative j 2 pi times 9.3 solving that will give 3.4810 minus j 40.7487 volts um, just want to point out uh, these signs are pretty important so you don't get confused. So like I said, location to the left is always going to be negative here, transmission line. If you'll notice here, we have this negative right here. It canceled out with the negative uh, location. And that's why that e to the j is positive in the first term and in the second term it becomes negative. So I hope you see that and get that. Don't confuse it. Length and location are different. So finally, we had everything that we needed to get to VG. VG is simply just VN times ZN plus ZG over Z n equals in re rectangular form 0 0.0362 minus j 99.999. However, if we look back at the question, we see he wanted it 
and time-bearing form, BGT, which is essentially what this is up here. I need a cosine. So to do that, we're going to find the magnitude of this number. I hope you all know how to find magnitude at this point. And then the phase. Phase is uh, arctan of imaginary over real. And plugging that into that formula will give 99.999 cosine omega t minus 1.5704 volts. Don't forget to put your units on stuff because you will take off for it. Maybe. <laughs> um, let's see. So, part two, or excuse me, part B. Uh, he wants us to find the power at the generator and the power at the load. So, I'm sure most of y'all have watched videos already besides this one, but. PG is simply just one half the real of VG voltage at the generator times the conjugate. Conjugate simply means that uh, you just flip it over the real axis. So you're changing the sign on the imaginary portion of your rectangular form to answer. Um, but IG is not exactly clear as to what it is equal to, so I will tell you. IG is simply just equal to VG. Oh, where did I put it? There we go. Uh, it's simply just uh, IG is equal to VG divided by ZN plus ZG. Alright. And what was the other one? PL? Yeah. Well, I'll just show you. So this will give an answer of 59.25. Watts. Political brackets. All right. PL. Power at the load. This one's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna do the real same thing. One half of the real components of the voltage at the load, which we have, times again the conjugate, the current at the load. And IL is simply just equal to VL over ZL. We have ZL here, and we're given VL. And I just wrote it here in phase or form for you on a test. Solving this will give an answer of 24.042 watts. Alright, pretty simple. Alright, so for the third part, excuse me, part C, determine the impedance at a distance of L over 3 from the load. So that is simply just 9.3 divided by 3, which is just 3.1. Um, so to solve for this, to find impedance, Kirchhoff's laws will tell us that uh, Z is equal to V over I. So we have some formulas that I wrote down here. I recommend writing all these down for the test, having it just available. But you can see here's one where we can plug it in, just like earlier. We plug it in. We're going to plug in a 3.1 here. And we have another one here, IZ. 3.1 there. 
um, can divide those. Uh, I recommend that you all try to derive this as well. But when you set those on top of each other, I'm going to just call this z of z. Setting those on top of each other, the v naught pluses will cancel out in some of the uh, Euler formulas or equations. Comes out to one plus gamma e to the j two beta z over one minus gamma e to the j two beta z. Again, when you put in the three point one lambda. They'll cancel out with the b, uh, so it'll just be 3.1 times 2 pi times 2, or in other words, 3.1 times 4 pi, using the same gamma that we saw for earlier. In rectangular form, uh, shit. that comes out to 54.2554. Minus J, 10.0358 ohms. Alright. So yeah, I recommend when you're trying to solve these problems, look at what you're asked for and what you're given, obviously. And me personally, I look at it, I start it, uh, I look at it at the finish point and where my formulas are that will take me to the beginning. So again, how we were looking for voltage at the generator, I found a formula for the voltage at the generator, this one right here. I saw what components it needed, saw I needed a VN and ZN, I knew I had what I needed for the ZN, so I looked what formula I had for VN. VN is simply just a voltage at a location which is given by this equation here. I knew I just needed V naught plus, which I knew I could get with the voltage at the load and gamma. We were given voltage at the load, so I just needed to get gamma. So a lot of these, uh, a lot of these questions, I may have said this earlier, you're going to be needing to solve in the beginning for gamma, uh, Zn, and uh, V naught plus. V naught plus really helps when you're trying to move to a different location on the transmission line. So that's it for the first question. Second question. All right. So this one's a little bit longer, but as you can see, that I wrote this as a you work this as two separate lines, right? You can see why I wrote big and small. Um, let's see. And you can see where, so we were given a length of 5.937 lambda. Again, don't be thrown off by the lambda. It'll cancel out with part of your beta. Um, again, this is going to be, he calls it x's. This is going to be x equals zero. Ignore that. Don't be thrown off by that. When I subtract 5.937 from what he called 4. Uh, XM 4.73, that tells me this is really at negative 1.207. Because again, remember going this way, it's a negative. And then this is 4.73. Um, let's see. <clears throat> So we're given an impedance to generator, um, given Z naught at 50, uh, Zn, which is the parallel portion, and we're given Zl, and the voltage we're given was Vn. Alright, so in order to get to Vg, 
we're going to have to solve this transmission line on the right side, the small one, essentially how we did the first one. And we get it to a point to where we solve, uh, solve it into, uh, basically deduce it, kind of like, like working it into parallel. Um, so we'll like have a, uh, a new zeal. It's kind of like how the big transmission line will like look into this. So we'll write it as a new ZL. And we solve this big one again. Uh, kind of like how we did it. You just kind of do it twice. I think where people get messed up is knowing what to put in parallel. But I will get to that. Um, so again, first, uh, we need to solve for the voltage at the generator and voltage at the load. Um, we'll actually be able to solve for the voltage at the load before the voltage at the generator. It's just easier. It's, um, but yeah, so you can see I wrote this right here. This prime denotes everything with a small loop, so everything is not um, confusing. So first, like I said, we're going to solve this small line, right? And I'm going to call gamma, gamma prime. I'm called ZL prime. I'm calling this ZL right here ZL prime. You can see how I wrote that up here. ZL prime. Don't be confused by that. This will come out to 0 0.0769 minus J the minus sign 0.6154 ohms. Excuse me, it's not ohms, it's unitless. Alright, so Zn prime. Um, I'm going to write this one out. It's kind of long, but... So we're doing Zl prime. Cosine. I'm not going to write beta, I'm going to write 2 pi, because the lambdas cancel out, cancel out. Times the length, 1.207. Right? Because it's a small line. Small line. We're ignoring the left side. We're only going from ZL to ZN right now. Um, plus JZ0. We know Z0 is 50. Uh, 2 pi times 1.207. Um, Again, so this formula uses uh, B times L. L is length. Length is always positive. It's uh, when the equation has a Z is when you'll use negative. Um, really off the top of my head, the only formula that is using the L instead of the Z is Zn. Um, don't quote me on that, but I don't think there's really any other significant formula that uses uh, length besides z in. All the others are using z, so you'll put in negatives there. Um, doing that, z naught, cosine, yada yada yada, same stuff as above, plus j z l prime, sine, yada yada yada, da da da, This comes out to 14.3133 plus J, 22.7072 ohms. Alright, um, let's see. Next, solve for B0 plus. Remember earlier I said a lot of times you're going to be solving for gamma, Zn, and B0 plus in the beginning. V naught plus is really what you're trying to get to a lot of times. Um, v naught plus use formula. Um, so the voltages that we have is Vm, right? And we know Vm is located at negative 1.207. So we can use that uh, phasor voltage formula uh, at the location 1.207 to find V naught plus. So that will look like Vm, which we have. 
divided by e to the j 2 pi times 1.207. So in the formula, this is a negative here. But since location is a negative, they cancel out. So it's just positive. OK. And after that, there's added to gamma prime e to negative j 2 pi times 1.207. This will give you a V-naught plus of 70.0024 plus J 40.0022 volts. So I told you earlier we could solve for uh, voltage at the load before voltage at the generator. And this is where we'll do it. The formula like in the first question, we'll have VL prime, because remember I called it prime since it's part of the small loop, is equal to V naught, oh, excuse me. This is V naught prime, V naught plus prime, because uh, the big loop will have its own V naught plus. Sorry for the confusion. So VL prime is equal to V naught plus prime times. 1 plus gamma prime. This gives 100 plus J 8.8826 times 10 negative 4 volts. However, the question asks for it in the time varying load, time varying form. So we need to find magnitude and phase and put it in a cosine. So that gives 100.0039 cosine WT plus 8.8823 times 10 negative 6 volts. Uh, let's move that over, it's kind of messy. And colors. Hmm. All right, that was our part B. Now we're going to continue with part A. And again, part A, we're going to the generator. So, um, this was really the extra step. We're not really going to use that any further. We're just going to pick up with our V not. Uh, with our uh, uh, so what we're gonna do now is solve for uh, ZL so let me write on this sum. alright so now we're gonna transfer from working the small line to the big line and how we do that is by so I'm gonna call this ZL is going to be Zn prime, which we solved for right here, in parallel with Zn. So, again, Zn prime is the impedance looking in after this point, right? But since this is not in series, this is parallel, it's basically like this whole thing is an impedance in parallel with Zn. Okay, so we put that in parallel, and looking from over here, looking in here, it looks like 1, and we're going to call it ZL, so it's like working any other line that we've worked. So this ZL, rectangular form is 45, uh, where did my ink go, is 45.8. 326 plus J.8154. Now we're going to solve for Zn. Zn is that big formula. Z naught, Zl. So we're going to use this Zl now. 
z0 is the same, however our length is different. The length of our transition transmission line is 4.73. So in case that's not clear, so he told us originally it was 5.973. I've subtract there because it was given a location relevant from this point here to here. So 4.73 and 1.207 add up to your 5.937. That means this point is now 0. This point is now your 4.73. Negative. So plugging this in, write some of this down, cosine. Since it was lambda, that cancels out and just leaves uh, 2 pi instead of the beta. What was the number again? 4.73, yeah. And again, this is positive since it's length. It's really the only time you're going to have to be using the length. Plus j, z naught, sine, 2 pi, uh, 4.73. God, that's really ugly. over z naught cosine same stuff plus j zl and again this zl is the one over here don't be confused sine da 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 da, da. this gives you an answer of 54.6299 4.6299 plus J.2405. This is the end, so it's ohms. And again, we're going to solve for, we have to resolve for gamma now. Could have technically done that earlier, but we're going to use our new ZL that we solved for over Z0, ZL plus Z0. This gives negative 0 0.0434 plus j 0 0.0089. And again, the other thing that I said we'd always almost always solve for is v naught plus. So v naught plus is equal to vm vm divided by 1 plus gamma. Um, so I can see how this might be confusing. So we knew earlier this equation over here. I had it as VL. So I know I don't want you to be confused and use the VL that you saw for because that's not correct. It's the voltage at that point, not what the entire line looks like. Here we have the voltage, so that's why it's Vm. But we're using this equation, it's just the M instead of L, um, to solve for the V naught plus. In doing that, V naught plus comes out to uh, Negative 52.3191 plus J 40.7850. Alright, so we have all that. And again, we're trying to get to the voltage at the generator. And like in question one, it's that last uh, equation you used. Show it over here. Voltage at the generator is Vn times Zn plus Zg over Zn. We use that.
Oh, excuse me. You gotta solve for uh, v n first. Then we can do that. So v n. That's what we did. V not plus here. Is e to j two pi times four point seven three plus gamma e to negative j two pi four point seven three. Again, since this is z, a location, the negative that was here cancels out, making this positive. And your vn comes out to 48.9989 plus j, 48.969. Now we can solve for voltage at the generator, which is Vn times Zn plus Zg over Zn. Pass in the time varying form, which is with the cosine, so you have to find a magnitude after you find the rectangular form. And your final answer will come out to 132.6757 cosine mega t plus 0 0.7830 volts colorful brackets alright so again like I said earlier we already solved for um, part B which is the voltage the load this load right here which we called VL prime T because it was a part of the small loop. Um, so that leaves us with part C. It's just uh, three power formulas. Uh, the first one, third one, you already know. The second one, PM. Can't guess. Uh, I'll write that out here. Let's write them all out. So. Let's see. The first one was power to generator. We used that earlier. It's one half real uh, VG, which we just solved for, times the conjugate of its current. It was 84.1191. Remember to find the current at the generator. It is the voltage at the generator uh, divided by uh, Zn plus Zg. Um, PL again was one half real. Uh, VL. So I called it VL prime because that's what I denoted the one on the very, very right because of a small loop, so don't be confused by that. VL prime times the conjugate of its current that came out to uh, 40.0031 watts. This is watts as well. Finally, PM, we are given the in the question, we were given the information to solve it. We were given VM here, and we were given uh, ZM here. You can find IM by dividing VM by ZM. Find its conjugate, da 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 da. That formula looks like one half real. Uh, Vm times conjugate m and that comes out to 3.9176 watts and that's it uh, I recommend with these that you can just write the formulas down I know some of the other videos went into it more. I think the one with Beatrice did it. I can give you a longer explanation. Explanation. 
Yeah, I just want to reiter reiterate, these formulas are really all you need. Um, a lot of times you need to get to V0 plus, and that way you can use this formula right here to move around the transmission line to any point. And uh, if you're given a piece that is in parallel, then you need to, uh, like that was on question two, if you're given something right here, then you're going to have to solve it separately, like two separate questions, two separate transmission lines, excuse me, and then uh, figure out what you need. So yeah, uh, best of luck.